<clears throat> Hello, it's Dr. John Roman Baker, DC, and I wanted to kind of expand on some topics that I've covered earlier. One is about pain. Pain is a thing that we all kind of go through from time to time, most of us do, and uh, it can be range all the way from a mere annoyance to something that really makes your life unbearable and controls what you do. Now, there's a lot of different information on the internet, and I took an article that I found on about.com, which is um, a site that a lot of people use, in addition to WebMD and some other sites to get their information from, and I wanted to kind of talk about their article, and also kind of make some corrections to the articles, even though it, it um, announces that it's reviewed by a board certified physician. Um, still, it wasn't perfect in my opinion, and you'll see why. I wanted to start out with the notion of uh, pain itself, what it is, and how, how we interpret it. Basically, pain is perceived in our brains. Our brains basically tell us we have pain, and that's usually mediated through nerves. Nerves are a specialized form of soft tissue. There's two basic kinds, there's sensory nerves and motor nerves. Sensory nerves obviously are the ones that affect motion in the body, uh, enable you, for example, to squeeze your fist. But if you squeeze your fist too hard and your fingernails dig into your hand, the sensory nerves go back to your brain and go, man, you need to back off, that's hurting. So that's kind of like a quick, um, a quick course on the two type, basic types of nerves. And there, of course, is the central nervous system with the brain and spinal cord, and the peripheral nervous system and the nerves that are supplied to the periphery or the outlying districts, if you want to view it in terms of city. Um, now, one term that's used in um, sometimes in medicine, but uh, but more more often in uh, layman's speech is this notion of quote-unquote nerve pain. For example, you might hear people say that drugs like gabapentin, uh, neurotin that's used for nerve pain as opposed to what other kind of pain because all pain is really mediated through the nerves whether it's um, pain that's from sitting too long or whether it's pain from sticking a needle in your finger. It's all going through the nervous system. That's how it gets to the brain that lets you know I'm hurting. So anyway, the proper term for quote-unquote nerve pain should be neuropathic pain, meaning that the nerve has a pathology, that it's either damaged or injured or the nerve itself is not functioning right, which is going to give rise to the sensation of pain as opposed to a crushing injury to the, well, that's a poor example, as opposed to sticking a needle in your finger, feeling pain, and the, the nerves working right, it's not really damaged that much, but the surrounding tissue has caused a cascade of biochemical events that result in you feeling pain. I hope I hadn't lost anybody. Um, this about calm um, article is called chronic, it's under the chronic pain heading and it says six main types of chronic pain. Now they're giving um, you the idea that they're going to give you six different types of pain and yet they, they're lump. They're giving the first one as a certain type of pain and then lumping a couple more under that which kind of is confusing. You'll see what I mean. First is nociceptive pain, no sigh means kind of an irritating or, or a problematic feeling. Um, inceptive is the perception or the awareness of. And they're calling nociceptive pain is pain that's detected in either the body soft tissues, um, skin, muscles, or organs by specialized sensory nerves known as nociceptors. Uh, nociceptors de detect painful stimuli sending information to the spinal cord and the brain for the interpretation and response. <clears throat> and they give four examples of nociceptive pain, which includes headaches, pelvic pain, arthritis, and fibromyalgia. Now, fibromyalgia is one of those terms that I've done some videos about it where it's kind of in a limbo as far as some doctors kind of poo-poo the notion but myalgia means 
muscle pain. Myo is muscle, algae is pain. Fibro is fibrotic deposits or fibrous sheath or whatever. So it's a combination of the fibrous sheath and the muscle that you're having pain in. And often it's seen as kind of an ill-defined type of pain as opposed to burning your finger and knowing exactly where it hurts. Six times, and on the second type, they they have somatic pain, but they say that somatic pain is a type of nociceptive pain. So there's where my, one of my problems with this article is, is they, say they, they call it nociceptive pain. Then the second type is, is uh, somatic pain, but that's just a form of nociceptive, so nociceptive. But anyway, they say somatic pain refers to pain detected by sensory nerves in the muscle, skin, and soft tissues. And for the record, skin and muscles are both soft tissues. So the wording, muscles, skin, and soft tissues, would lead you to think that soft tissues is different than muscles and skin, which it's not. And they give what they say are four types of uh, this somatic pain, being headaches, tension headaches specifically, pelvic pain from joint instability, arthritis again, and back pain not caused by nerves. And I think that's really confusing because not caused by nerves what you know what they're meaning to say is that it's back pain where there's no damage to the nerves that the nerves are structurally and functionally working right but they're relaying information that the tissues are causing pain but they they did a poor job in, in making you understand what that means visceral pain again they're saying is a form of nociceptive pain so why have they got it calling it six different types of pain when you have basically just got subsets of the first category. Um, and they're saying the vis visceral pain, and visceral usually means gut, like you have a visceral feeling, gut feeling. Visceral pain refers to pain detected by nociceptors in the body's internal organs. Like somatic pain, visceral pain detected by sensory nerves is spent to the spinal cord, yada yada all pain is going to be pretty much sent through the, to the spinal cord to the brain so it's kind of kind of confusing and they're they're listing endometriosis irritable bowel syndrome bladder pain such as cystitis which is bladder inflammation and uh, prostate pain so again that's what they're calling visceral pain is prostate pain endometriosis irritable bowel syndrome and cystitis. And then they've got neuropathic pain. And again, neuropathic pain is really the right term for what a lot of people call nerve pain. It shouldn't be called nerve pain because it should be called nerve pathology or neuropathic pain because it's actually pain generated by there being something wrong with the nerve. And for example, you could have diabetic neuropathy would be a nerve pain type of pain or neuropathic pain. And they're listing things like peripheral neuropathy, also called diabetic neuropathy, I just said that, phantom limb pain, post mastectomy pain, and sciatica. And just, you know, from, from, for the record, chronic pain, and they're calling these types of chronic pain, Chronic pain really is pain that's been there for over six months. There's acute pain and chronic pain. They sometimes break uh, the pain down into non-malignant pain, meaning pain that's not caused by cancer because cancer-related pain is a whole different topic. But, I mean, the way they've got this broken down, I feel is kind of odd, and I think it misleads you in some respects. Um, and then the, we have psychogenic pain, and they're saying psychogenic pain is the term for pain caused by a psychological disorder such as depression or anxiety. Many psychological disorders have physical complications such as muscle aches, pains, fatigue, um, because psychogenic pain doesn't usually have any physical origin, it's more difficult to treatment. treat. Uh, psychogenic pain is real. It may require a different treatment approach than other physical types of pain. Non-pharmaceutical pain treatments combined with antidepressants. Uh, they're talking about 
treatment methods would be like TENS, transcutaneous herb neural stimulation, distraction, getting your mind off things, relaxation, and counseling. And again, psychogenic means pain coming from the mind, um, but then they say that depression can be, it, to me it's, it's really kind of odd to call it pain. It's more psychological dysfunction, but I mean it can be perceived as mental anguish maybe. Um, then the last one they want to use is idiopathic pain. And basically idiopathic means we don't know cause, excuse my language. Um, it's pain exists when there is no known physical or psychological cause. They don't know the reason. It's, it's, it makes it sound like that there's no real cause, but that's not true. Idiopathic pain, it means the pain's there, you just don't know what's causing it. Um, idiopathic pain cannot be traced back to a nociceptive, neuropathic, or psychogenic cause. While the pain may not be detectable with current medical knowledge, it is very real. They're saying that it's more common in people with a pre-existing pain disorder. Uh, those disorders include TMJ, temporal mandibular joint disorder, jaw joint problems, and again fibromyalgia. Um, pain is a difficult thing to deal with for a lot of people. Um, people respond to pain both culturally and individually in different manners. The Native Americans, for example, were often very stoic to pain. In fact, that was kind of like for men showing how tough you were was to be able to withstand lots of pain. And there are certain cultures, cultural uh, differences between males and females. Sometimes guys think, well, it's okay for a woman to complain a lot about her pain, but guys should, you know, buck up and not really complain about pain. Um, Another issue with pain is that in, in my previous video I talked about the pressure by some groups, especially law enforcement in Texas and other states, to get rid of uh, hydrocodone opiates as a um, treatment method, and, and which is forcing a lot of doctors, especially pain management doctors, to go to these GABA, gabapentin and, and you know, Lyrica and Neurontin, um, problem, they're problematic in, in some respects in that they were really, Neurontin really, I think, originally targeted neuro, neuropathic type pain. Um, and hydrocodone really, I think, is a better choice. I'm not, uh, I'm not a person that prescribes medications, but from my own patients that I've seen using um, Neurontin, and Lyrica, Hydrocodone, Tramadol, you name it. Um, that Hydrocodone for fairly significant back pain from um, disc problems, etc. is a better choice. It's cheaper, has less serious side effects, uh, and but the, the addiction is something you have to deal with. But like I said on the previous uh, videos, that studies continually come up with the same results that in a, a properly managed um, situation which you know you're assuming a physician doctor patient relationship should be that with prescriptions given monitored appropriately there's really not a serious problem with addiction one study found less than one percent the uh, Edlund's I believe it was Edlund's study found two around two percent of, of 15,000 veterans who hadn't taken opiates before of after three months developed a problem with addiction um, and I think the addiction issue is more uh, they were talking about psychogenic pain that it's more a psychological addi addiction sometimes than it is a physical addiction um, but that's debatable now another issue that, that I wanted to get to in this video is that um, chronic pain, and, and for the record it's pain that's lasted more than six months, has a strong depression um, component to it 
And we know that when people are depressed, a lot of times they feel pain more intensely. That if you're up and happy and running around, sometimes for the same level of pain in your body, you're not going to feel that as much as if you're sitting around moping, woe is me, the world's just no place for me to live in, things are horrible and they're getting worse. And pain is going to be perceived, because that's important in dealing with pain and pain management is the perception of pain, is that pain is perceived to be more intense, more disabling. And there's also a condition called hyperalgia, or para, para, paradoxical hyperalgia, where uh, algesia, where um, people that have been on for example, opiates long term, sometimes start to find a certain nociceptive event, a pain causing stimuli, that used to wouldn't cause them to hurt that bad, but now they're even more sensitive to that pain. And in, in essence, it hurts more. Now, it doesn't happen to everyone. Um, but they're, they're finding that even in animal studies, this hasn't really been uh, found in human studies yet, but it has been in, in animal studies, that even in ultra-low doses with things like tramadol, you can develop this um, paradoxical hyperalgia. In other words, becoming very easily um, stimulated to be in, in a great pain from what might have been in the past uh, a fairly easily tolerated noxious event or painful event. So that complicates uh, the management of pain is this notion whether or not with if someone goes into a tolerant state and they're taking more hydrocodone for example to get the same effect because of they're now tolerating it so the stair step effect it has to get up higher to get the same effect whether or not they're going to sleep in sleep in s fall into the the hyper uh, analgesia or hyper algesic state where it takes uh you're, you're taking more pain meds but it, but now it's not really taking care of pain and you're more sensitive to pain um so there's my rant i, I really kind of uh, haven't done a great job on that, but I want to kind of introduce some ideas like the uh, paradoxical hyperalgia and uh, hyperalgesia, and also the notion of uh, what chronic pain is, and kind of talk about what nerve pain is. It's actually neuropathic. So thanks for watching. Have a great day. More later. Bye.